Hello, I'm back with another information video with SAT score, and today we're going to be covering the uh, most recommended steel ships for 2023. Now, the first ship I'll let SAT score cover for the one of the top recommended for this year. All right, so my first recommendation is the Borgone. She is a French battleship available for 30,000 steel. And the reason I recommend her is because she is essentially an Alsace, but with Reload Booster. She remains pretty consistent and has a strong gimmick compared to many of the other ships that we'll mention later. So, not only, so a lot of new players will find her easy to play. Experienced players can abuse that Reload Booster to great effect. And so she remains a good overall, uh, a well-rounded ship. All right, so the next recommended ship is going to be the Mecklenburg. Uh, the Mecklenburg is a very strong kiting battleship uh, where you can use HE on your targets and get almost pretty much guaranteed fires, or you can use AP because it, it does have amazing dispersion as well. Uh, it does cost 31,000 steel, so if you're looking for that kind of battleship, you can. It is a lot of fun to play for sure in a kiting position. If you're trying to be super aggressive with it, though, it doesn't always fit that role well, so it's more of a long to mid-range battle uh, tier 10 German battleship uh, for that regard. Uh, what is the next ship SAT score? So the next recommended ship is actually the newest, the German destroyer Z42. She costs 27,000 steel, but uh, she is a very, she's essentially a gunboat version of the Z52. So if you liked how the Z52 played, you'll most likely like, you most likely uh, like this Z42 playstyle. She has a few differences, like a different smoke loadout uh, and smaller caliber guns, but when she but she can be very powerful when you play her correctly. Uh, what's your next recommended ship? The next recommended ship is going to be the Ragnar. A lot of us, uh, if you're new here, the Ragnar is one of the top uh, DD hundreds in the game currently, uh, along with uh, being a great long range farming ship. It costs twenty seven thousand steel. Uh, it is, it's been around for at least six months, seven months, in the steel in the in the armory. If you guys can enlighten me in the chat, a great in the YouTube comments, I definitely appreciate that. It's definitely been a lot of a large use in clan battles and in ranked. But as of late, I hasn't seen as much of action. But it's definitely a very strong ship for randoms, ranked, and clan battles. So we'll have to see how it goes in this upcoming clan battle season uh, as well. Uh, for the next ship, I'll let SATs cover, cover the Stalingrad. Mm -hmm. Stalingrad is... I, actually, I introduced the newest ship, the Z-42. So now I introduce the oldest steel ship, the Stalingrad. And Stalingrad is 20,000 steel. But essentially, she's a Russian cruiser, but with battleship guns. She also has radar because of balance, comrade. And with those battleship guns, she uh, punched citadels into battleships, even at like 15 kilometers range. While her radar lets her counter destroyer movements whenever necessary. But because of that, she's still a pretty decent ship, even into 2023. Now, what is your next recommended ship, though? The next recommended ship is going to be the Austin. Now, the Austin is more of a fun ship to play in randoms or any other like game modes like airships mode or any other fun game modes like that. I don't think you'll see much real use in ranked or in clan battles, but it does have an unlimited reload booster, so you'll never run out of them. But you do, of course, have to wait for it to reload, of course, to be able to use it. It does have very strong anti-air and does have a heal and hydroacoustics as well. Uh, but the th it is pretty much a large, a, pretty much a Lanta. So if you show broadside, you sh you're in the open too much, and you know how to dodge, you're going to get dev struck. So definitely a more of a fun, higher level kind of ship to recommend it. And it does cost 29,000 steel. So if you're looking for a more fun ship to get for steel, uh, I would definitely recommend the Austin. Now for our final recommended ships, uh, I'll let SAT score cover the incomparable. So, Incomparable is actually the most expensive of our recommended ships, coming in at 31,000 steel. steel. She, is a she is a Royal Navy battlecruiser, but she has some very weird quirks. She has one of the biggest guns in the game, 
508, so you can overmatch, uh, you can overmatch, uh, battleship armor. And more importantly, for some reason, she has 10.6, uh, best concealment. That means you will outspot ev almost every other cruiser that you're expected to fight. Just imagine a Des Moines just uh, going along and then suddenly uh, Incomparable comes out of nowhere, throws six, uh, six five, 508mm AP rounds into your broadside for a depth strike. And you, couldn't, and you literally never saw it coming. That is what the Incomparable can do. Now for our honorable mentions, uh, SAT will cover the remainder of the uh, steel ships on why we wouldn't as highly recommend these. Uh, and of course, these will be the FDR, Shikishima, Plymouth, and Vallejo. All right. So we'll start with the carrier. FDR is uh, FDR is not highly recommended just because there are already two good coal carriers you can buy, most notably the uh, Malta and the uh, Imomon. You could spend, and FDR is very expensive as a steel carrier, so I just recommend the coal ships first if you want that, uh, can if you want the SCV experience. The Shikishima is also uh, kind of a side grade to Yamato. Uh, compared to the other ships, she doesn't seem to be as exciting. You just get six 510mm guns. But at the same time, if you you could also get the super ship Satsuma and get the same guns on a very simple call. And you get a funny button. So Shikishima isn't highly recommended anymore. Uh, Plymouth is kind of the what kind of what happens if you took a Minotaur, gave it radar and smoke, and then tried to balance it. Because of that, she doesn't feel quite as strong. She doesn't have the firepower. And the smoke hydro gimmick isn't as uh, sorry. The smoke radar gimmick isn't quite as powerful as you would uh, would have imagined. And then finally, Vallejo is not, we don't highly recommend it, not because of her performance, but more because she is a tier nine. Uh, she does get enhanced credit income, but she's pretty expensive if you want a uh, credit farming ship. I'd recommend a tier nine coal ship instead for. Uh, enhanced credit income. All right. Do you, uh, do you think there's anything else we should cover, Bo? Nope. That is going to be it. Thank you so much for your time today, SAT Scar. I do greatly appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely leave them down in the comments down below. This is Overlord Bo and SAT Score, and I'll talk to you all later.